My internet news feed is mostly crap. I try to be smart, right, and discern what I'm reading online and make sure that it's lining up with truth, but for the most part, it seems like everyone has an agenda or everything's biased. So how do you figure out what's real? A technique that I used to use was I would read something on one side of the aisle and then I'd go read something on the other side of the aisle and then I would assume that the truth is in the middle. Truth is truth. It doesn't have to be on that spectrum. It's its own separate thing. Recently, I've been tricked a couple of times. I've seen a story and I've read about it and was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And the more I dig, the more I see this narrative happening. And then suddenly, a couple of days later, it comes out that what I was reading wasn't true, even though a lot of people thought it was. If I can be fooled by a story like that from a couple of different sources, how much is getting through my filter? What's even scarier is I share things online. So how much of the stuff that I share is not true? Like, am I part of the problem? Because I want to be a good guy. I, I want to be like a part of the solution. So here's how it works in engineering. If there's a process that's failing, you find the root cause of that failure and you try to fix it. In this case, my failure is the ability to discern fact from fiction online. There's a well-respected nonprofit school for journalism. It's called the Pointer Institute. They are the experts for good journalism. Pointer has created this program called MediaWise and it's supported by Google to help people learn how to see what's true and what's not true online. I've partnered with MediaWise to make this video to figure out how I can help myself and other people learn how to separate fact from fiction online. As part of this partnership, I traveled to Austin, Texas to talk about misinformation online at South by Southwest. I want to introduce you to Katie Byron, who runs the MediaWise project. This is Katie. Um, we're buddies, and she's been a journalist for 15 years. The goal here is to get people more intelligent about how they use the internet, right? Yes. Katie is smart. She really knows her stuff, and she told me there's three easy steps to figuring out if something is true online. To see this in action, I pulled up a tweet I knew Katie would personally like. She's a third-generation journalist, so I tried to pull at her heartstrings and show her a tweet that made journalists look really good. Let's see what she does to engage to figure out if this is true or not. I saw this tweet. And it makes me feel things, right? It's talking about these- it Makes me feel things too. I love journalism. <laughs> it's talking about these dudes that like basically help expose the lies and you know, they're Bob watching- Woodward and, and Carl Are Bernstein. they famous journalists? Yes, very. Okay, okay I don't know a lot about it. So anyway. All the President's Men, the movie, the old movie, it's about them. And this is, this is actually a scene from that time. I want to retweet that, right? Should I retweet it's it? It's very retweetable. <laughs> should, should I retweet it? I mean, I think- Number one, I would look at who is Don Winslow. Step one, you can see that she tries to figure out who was behind the information. I hope he's not somebody really important that I should know who he is. <laughs> who's Don Winslow? Okay, number so one, who's behind the information? I need to figure that out. He's an author. New York Times number one international best-selling author of The Cartel. He's not necessarily an expert on the topic of journalism. journalism. That to me is not enough for the retweet. So next step after so you So you would at, not retweet it at this point? No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. So, so now what do I do? Uh, there's no link to any additional information. And that to me is always a red flag, always to find in more information about what they're saying. Number two, what's the evidence? This is the most important step for Katie. And one thing I found was interesting is she didn't stop at just, is the story true? She went further. She wanted to see if the photo was real. To do this, she used a really clever technique. It's just a Google reverse image search. Use a reverse Google image search and right click and search Google for an image. It's as simple as that. This is one of my favorite tools. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So, first, so I'm, I'm first search results. Uh, Reddit, Bob Wood, yeah, so Twitter, Blogspot, Tumblr, Tumblr. Scoop Nest, I don't know what that is. So I'm, I'm supposed to be looking for things that I recognize yeah, as and reputable. I don't, and I spend all my days lateral reading and I don't know any of these. So all this is These are all not reputable names or well-known sources. So that is a red flag in itself. But so what if I did this? What if I went up here to tools and I searched like, let's say like last year. I should get an old source now. So maybe I can find the first person. Washington Post. What is this? So that's a good sign. NPR. Washington Post. So this is a panel, but not showing the photo, right? So that's a... Night of his resignation felt like to you. Elizabeth? This is the night that he announced he was going the to resign. The night he announced he was resigning. He's going to resign, and it was the next day that was truly bizarre. I think most people probably aren't going to sit through a five-minute video to find out, right? So I think I'd go back to the search results. Okay. And see what else is what else we got. This is called... Look but at but the... that was an original source. Those were the guys. Yes, but we're talking... We're trying to verify the veracity of the photo, right? Got it. Because somebody could have photoshopped in 
Nixon's You think image. differently than me. <laughs> I would have been like, yeah. yeah, they were there, retweet. <laughs> but you're trying to make sure that the image is real. You have a, a higher level of fidelity that's required. Before and skepticism. You, you know, skepticism. I think that because the internet is full of a lot of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Number three, what do other sources say? Katie taught me a really interesting technique called lateral reading. Basically that means instead of reading vertically and just looking at your news feed. Yeah, because I'm just and, scrolling on my phone. Yeah. yeah and you, you stop at a tweet or you stop at a Instagram meme or whatever. Instead of reading vertically and just trying to figure out is this legitimate or not, just by looking at that, you need to open up tabs on your browser and literally read laterally. Sometimes when you get to the end of this three-step process, you're pretty sure that the thing is real and you want to tweet it because it makes you feel things and you want other people to feel things. But at that point, if you don't know 100%, this is the moment that you have to decide if you're gonna be part of the problem of misinformation online or if you're gonna be part of the solution. You have to do something that she calls click restraint. Okay, well, I, I can't find the actual image. Okay, so to me that's just generally a red flag and that's it's not something to be discouraged by. It's also telling you something. It's telling you that you can't find this image anywhere else. So it could be doctored, number one. Number two, I'm not going to feed that. I'm not going to retweet that. I'm not going to share that on but, my social but media But those are your feed. homies. They're like talking about how journalism is I know. It's is really amazing. tempting. This is like chocolate for a journalist, <laughs> that tweet, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to exert my click restraint and I'm not going to reshare that. Really? So now that we're armed with these techniques, who's behind the information, what does the evidence say, and what do other sources say, Katie wanted me to take a shot at it. She found something online that was a little bit controversial. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that gets people stirred up online, and she wanted me to take a crack at figuring out if it was true or not. Right? Yeah. You're gonna send it to me? I sent it to you. How do I fact check that? Memes are kind of tricky because you need to do a screenshot that takes away the text. Google Here. image search, drag and drop. Arctic sea ice. Minimum, is that it? Could try that. That's NASA, so that's always a good sign. Okay, so this is there the image, is. right? Bingo. Yeah. The dates are wrong, so this, which is really important to the story. Oh, look at that. They blotted out the date to put whatever date yeah. they wanted on there. Punks. Of... It's called Just Facts Page, too. <laughs> like, ultimately, the person that made that post was trying to say, like, hey, global warming is real, and if you don't believe it, you suck. But ultimately, they undermined what they were trying to do because they showed false data and then somebody on the other side that's a climate change denier or whatever terminology you want to use to get excited about yeah. that person can say see you doctored the photos right and so it muddies the waters and it makes truth this difficult thing to find and so ultimately even if you're trying to put an exclamation point beside the thing that you believe you could undercut your very cause. Exactly, I mean, it's it's like feeding the beast. Something I've been given a lot of thought to recently is that in the developing moments of a new news story, that is the most likely time that I'm gonna get misinformation online. I think it has to do with the speed of which the news cycle occurs, and to explain this, I have a metaphor for something I learned about fighter jets in the 50s. There was this colonel in the Air Force named Colonel John Boyd who developed a decision cycle called the OODA loop. He figured out if you could observe, orient, decide, and act first, you would complete your OODA loop before the enemy and you would almost always score hits and win. I asked my buddy Ben to make a simulation to help me illustrate this point. Here we have two fighter jets. They're constantly trying to outmaneuver each other. The only difference in the jets is that the red one is able to get through its decision cycle first. The blue one takes its time getting through its OODA loop and as a result it's always too slow and ends up reacting to information that's already changed. This means that no matter how many times I restart the simulation, the red jet is is always going to be the one that's going to score the big hits. Now, think of your social media news feed like it's a war zone. It's not unlike the dogfights seen in aerial combat. It's a hyper competitive environment where the stakes are high and reaction time matters. Instead of observe, orient, decide, act, let's change the decision cycle to how people make news posts online. People observe things, they may or may not verify them, they write a social media post, and then they click publish. Oftentimes, whoever publishes first gets the most views, the most followers, which eventually turns into more advertising dollars. People are rewarded for posting fast. The problem today is that your modern newsfeed is driven by social media, which rewards whoever can post first. And unlike when traditional high quality journalism dominated, on social media, there are no editors to verify the truth. In fact, many people intentionally skip this step so they can post quicker in order to be the first one to get the views. Unfortunately, what this means is now you must verify 
the truth, because unless it's coming from a reputable source, it is not going to be fact-checked. So how do we break this cycle of misinformation? First of all, you need to read the entire article, not just the title. If there's nobody willing to put their name next to the information and there's no sources cited, that is a crap news source. They care more about views and clicks than telling you the truth. You should unsubscribe to that news source or that social media account, and you should clean up your news timeline. Good journalists exist. They do. You have to find them. You have to follow them. Reward them for their work. Share their work. Tell people, hey, Hey, this is a well-sourced article. You should follow this person. Do some lateral reading. Use Google to get to the heart of where that image came from. And most important of all, think before you click and share something online. Do some digging, try to fact check it yourself, and only then should you share information online. Do not spread misinformation. Let's be part of the solution, not part of the problem. If you see something on social media that you're not sure about and you really want some help figuring out if it's legitimate or not, just share it with the hashtag or reply with the hashtag is this legit and tag at MediaWise and my team and I will help you figure it out. There you go. So hashtag is this legit. You know we're going to just totally flood your Twitter account, right? And your Instagram. <laughs> we're, ready. we're ready. You're ready? Yeah. Okay. Hashtag is this legit. You should be doing the lateral reading yourself first, but if you really can't figure it out, this is the lady to talk to. Yeah, anyway. we'll help you figure it out. Also, follow us on all across social at MediaWise. We have some really cool fact-checking content that teaches a lot of the things we've been talking about today. Huge thanks to MediaWise for supporting the creation of this video. And I wanted to let you know about an upcoming series on Smarter Every Day. I'm doing a very unique, well-researched um, series, I guess you would call it, on algorithm manipulation. I went to YouTube, I went to Twitter, I went to Facebook, I talked to the people in charge of these things, the people that develop countermeasures to try to fight the misinformation that we experience online. I got to go talk to the people that are in charge of those things, and it is very fascinating. That is a, I mean, it's unlike anything I've ever seen online. So, um, if you haven't subscribed to Smarter Every Day, please help me spread the message on this by subscribing and sharing those videos when they come out. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one.